but they've quit the field and they've been content to sort of watch from the sideline and kind of say, I and kind of just nod and say, I told you so every now and then. And, uh, but one of the things that, one of the things that Southern conservatives that it is, it's a, this essentially the basic point of this essay is he's talking about Southern race relations. And he does, he accurately points out, Paul will talk about this occasionally too. I don't know where Paul cottoned onto this from, but the idea that actually in the course of defeating the South, what actually sort of happened is that the entire country nationalized Southern relation, Southern race relations. So in the process of defeat, in the process of defeating the Southern Confederacy, um, the country, uh, especially because it brought northern, it brought northern conservatives and northern liberals into contact with, you know, into very close contact with the South for the first time. And a lot of times they decided that you know maybe you know maybe this race thing you know may, maybe we were being a little too idealistic about it. But the you know the main point is that that that, that Bradford makes in this you know in this essay is that you know. The entire country has sort of, and this is in 1973, so this is probably the most racially reconciliatory decade, maybe the 80s, 70s and 80s, probably the most racially reconciliatory de decades in American history. So this is, and he points out at this point, and this is a very, is a very optimistic essay, if you actually go read it, where he points out, he says, well, the nature of sub, the nature of race relations in the entire country have sort of brought themselves into line with race relations in the South. And he calls it an anti-millenarian worldview. And he's using this word millenarian in a religious context. Okay, you know, um, I don't really want to get into because everybody's going to have the end to, of the world, right? Yeah, right, right, right. It's kind of what you see happening all around you right now is that you know everybody, everyone has a millenarian attitude about race. They have millenarian attitudes about a lot of things, but this Scott Adams thing, this is a great example of a millenarian attitude about race. He's like panicked, screeching into the microphone. We got to get away from him. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, this is like the world is ending, you know, um, and Southerners we really don't think that way. You know, we're, no. we're, we're, we're I disposed. Don't hearing him scream that I think he was slightly more collected, but I, I think you, I, I get what you're saying. The urgency right. isn't there. I use the word scream a lot, but the, um, the, yeah, the, 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 the urgency and, and it's, you see it's a lot in the dissident, right? This idea that race is going to be the wedge issue that we rest on. Okay. And I think it's unique. I don't think it works. And one of the, one of the reasons why, you know, one of the reasons why I, I think this is essentially because of this, the, when we look at what millenary and attitudes towards race have, have done for us. And you, you kind of get that northern, you kind of get that northern hard, hard, you know, or, or, or you know, hard segregation, or you get 53% of black people saying it's not okay to be white, and that sort of thing. The line that, uh, the line in the essay that the real money shot is when uh, Bradford points out, he says that Southerners in the South, you know, in the South, whites and blacks have learned, and it's just a beautiful turn of phrase. He says that issues of race are too important to be solved. OK, and so you just you really. So the idea of trying to solve the racial problem. Is. Iffy, OK, you know, it, it's it's incredibly complex and it will tend towards millenarian conclusions. We need to deport all of them. We need to kill all of them. We need to exclude them in a harsh way. And. That, it had never worked. You know, you could say, you know, people say, and I, I wouldn't extend this to immigration. You know, like, I think you can, you can definitely shut down immigration. But the idea that the United States is going to be, you know, after some great ideological victory or some Butlerian jihad or something like that, that it's going to be all white or it's even going to be 90% white. Demographics don't really work that way. You know, country population flows don't really work that way. You can kind of create a differential. It's going to favor one versus the other, but again, we're looking at a, we're looking at a century of, as academic agent would say, a century of black worship, and they have moved from ten percent of the population to twelve and a half percent of the population. Okay, so these needles are very hard to move without you know drastic violence, and so this you know the the, the racial question you know are are there differences between the races? Of course there are, but 
you really do just kind of have to learn. And this is contrary to the, you know, the northern shitlib perspective as well, or the, the colorblind perspective that the boomer truth regime is run with, which is that there are, we know we don't see, we don't see color. Okay. Race is definitely a real thing. Okay. But the idea that you're going to be able to permanently solve this problem is probably not, it's probably not coming, you know? So like, you're going to have to learn to accommodate it. And yeah, right. This, well, looking and, at, you know, looking at history, it seems like you're talking about solving one of the main drivers of history, which is intertribal conflict or uh, intra-tribal conflict, yeah, one or the other. Um, this would be intertribal conflict. You're right. Well, and, uh, either way, it, you're not going to solve it. You're not going to solve factions within races or races competing with each other because that's just going to end history. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, yeah, it might do that. But, you know, I mean, there, there are examples of multi-ethnic. Of course, in you, there's, a, there's a scale thing. You could look at the Austro-Hungarian Empire and you could say, well, the difference between Slavs and Italians and Germans is markedly less, markedly less than the difference between, you know, the different racial groups in America. And you'd be right about that. And, you know, only a certain amount of accommodation is possible, which is why, yeah, I think, you know, removing this compulsion and letting people separate letting people separate and letting people build their own communities the way uh, the way they would like to is, you know, I was, I'm starting to sound almost libertarian, but I was about to say, the, so it sounds to me like you're about to start talking about federal intervention, harming communities, uh, uh, you know, economically and politically. It sounded like well, that was know, where you were going, but there are I, I certain types of, was... there are certain types of federal intervention that I think are okay. But you know, whenever they, whenever it comes to tat, whenever it comes with the tag of like of specific racial policy, like, okay, we'll build your roads for you, but you have to, you have to bust black kids into white schools. Nobody has ever. And, you know, even Joe Biden, you know, Joe, Joe Biden, when he was more lucid was, it was against busing. You know, this was, this was all, this was a hot button well, issue. It's like one of these things where it's like, all this is like, there's this like strange idea that there's a consensus, even on the left, that this was a good idea. It's not really the case. And it hasn't gotten us anywhere, you know, and, Frankly, I don't see the racial pro. I don't see us making any racial progress now either. I don't, you know, it's, it's when you have, again, and this is true, when you have 50, 47% of black people who respond to a poll and say it's not okay to be white, okay, we're moving hard backwards in time because if, you know, if you go back to 1950, you're probably going to, the, the number of the, the percent of black people that could potentially be polled that would say it's not okay to be white would be close to zero you know um we're obviously moving backwards in race relations in a lot of ways and i think you know despite the catastrophic collapse of southern conservatism through our own laziness through our own you know inability to politic you know in, in, inability to really manifest much of anything in the way of policy in the last 30 years our you know tendency to just be the gop's lapdog to, you know, to lend our culture and our symbolism and our entire way of life wholesale to this Yankee banker party. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, it hasn't gotten us anything, but it is true that we have, that the South has in fact bequeathed its peculiar racial problems to the rest of the country. Um, as academic would say in the form of black worship, probably, but the, you know, the idea that this is going to be solved is, 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 it's probably ludicrous. And one of the things that is true is that the South, despite being really, Southern conservatives, despite being really bad at politics, they got a lot of stuff substantially right. And I think this is one of them, that this is the most you can ever really hope to do is accommodate racial things. And the best way I think to do this is to, you know, sort of let people, you know, put people on a relatively even, you know, you, you don't want to, don't make black people use different water fountains. Don't, uh, you know, but if you let them do their own thing, they'll, they'll tend to do their own thing, you know? And I think that would go a long way towards diffusing the pressure. But I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a lot of people who disagree with this. You know, it's like one of these things, it's like, why don't more people, why don't, why don't more people, you know, say this sort of thing? Um, Nobody in the GOP is for sure. You know, it's, well, I don't know. But for, it's like someone I, in the you know, GOP to say what you just said and admit the implications, they're going to have to acknowledge that there are differences between races. Yeah. Yeah. That is what it is, isn't it? You're going to have to push that needle. And that's all you really need to push because you are right. I am with you on this. Um, you know, the policy should be geared towards accommodating differences between people. 
we do this with men and women on a number of policies written in law right now. But as soon as we start saying, oh, well, you know, not in the exact same ways, but pretty similar, there are differences between groups of people based off of their, their lineage, their race. Um, you're not allowed to say that and we have to pretend like these people are equal. And so we have an equal law placed upon people that are fundamentally different. And it just ends up harming, you know, everyone involved. Uh, right. I mean, I think the, 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 the tight case on the lion. 